The jazz clarinetist and band leader Aka Bilk has died after a short illness. He was 85. He's perhaps best remembered for his worldwide hit Stranger on the Shore in 1962. Nick Hyam looks back at his life. With his trademark bowler hat and fancy waistcoat, Aka Bilk personified the trad jazz revival of the 1950s and 60s. He was born Bernard Bilk. Acker was Somerset slang for mate. He changed his name after learning to play the clarinet in the army. He performed with all the major figures in British jazz, including Chris Barber, Kenny Ball and George Melly. But he appealed to more than just jazz lovers with his haunting signature tune, Stranger on the Shore. stayed in the charts for a year and won four gold discs. He said he never tired of it. Generations of music lovers agreed. Well, I've been speaking to fellow musician Kenny Ball Jr. and he said he was devastated to hear the news and then he shared his memories of Ackerbilk. He was such a wonderful player. My dad always turned around and said there'd never be a clarinet player that's so smooth uh, that'd ever come again from, of course, from England. And uh, he conquered everywhere and he, he, had, he was such a lovely bloke, a very genuine guy. And uh, I spoke to him, last time I spoke to him was about two or three months ago at home. And uh, he wanted to come to one of my gigs, which was because uh, I'm carrying on Kenny Jr. and the jazz men, and uh, up in Hippodrome. And I said to him, Would you like to come along and uh, get up? And, and, and it's funny because I just wanted him to come along and sit in the audience and just enjoy it because he was always at home, bless his heart, where he retired. And he said, Yeah, I'll come along, get in touch with my management, I'll be there. <laughs> but that was Acker. And uh, I've got fond memories of touring with him and playing with him with the three Bs. I think it was wonderful. I think we've got a very, very short clip of him playing with your dad, Kenny Ball. Oh, have a little listen. Thank you. Marie, Marie, Michelle, Michelle, Nanette, Nanette, Nanette. Well, Ackerbert wasn't there, it was your dad, but yeah. anyway. Um, they were so well known, weren't oh. they, in, in, in their time? 60 I mean, years. Yeah. They, uh, they also conquered where, really, the industry was so high with, with rock and roll, the Beatles, and uh, they had number ones all the way around the world. What strikes me as quite curious, I suppose, is that the song that he's most famous for, the tune he's most famous for, Stranger on the Shore, uh, was just was a very sort of gentle uh, piece of music compared with the trad jazz, which is how he made his name. That's, that's it, and it's the same situation, it's the same thing. When you could see him do it on stage, it's the one song that everybody came to just hear him say, but when he appeared and he played, he was such a character, he told jokes on stage and he was very famous for his funny jokes, but also he was, he was a wonderful player and he had a wonderful band, the Paramount Jazz Band. But uh, my dad and Acker were absolutely, people thought they were en enemies, they weren't. No, no, they were great mates, always speaking to each other every other day. And uh, I mean, I great for them because he got me, when my father passed away last year, Acker was, in the dressing room in Edinburgh last year when I was playing with my band with Acker, doing the three beats with the, uh, Chris Barber, Acker and my band. And uh, he turned around and told me how to carry on the band and uh, how I've brought the, uh, the, the feeling of my band from the 60s where, where, you know, where it was so famous and jazzy and up and lifting and everything. And uh, it's actually, it's, it's kind of bringing tears to my eyes about it actually because he is such a wonderful... And, from the Kenny Ball Jr. and the Jazz Men, my love goes out to Jenny and Jenny, of course, and the uh, family, because they're wonderful people. So how, what's your uh, sort of lasting memory of him? I mean, obviously, he was instantly recognisable, wasn't he, with the gold hat and his waistcoat? I could not turn around and tell you on, the, on live telly, but <laughs> it was always, uh, as Les, the management, would always say, it was the most funniest thing was always my dad and Echo in the, in the bus. And they'd be sitting up the front talking about old times and what they used to do and how they used to do things and everything. But Acker hated traffic jams. 
and immensely. And he hated people overtaking the bandwagon. He hated people, anything like that. He hated it immensely. And it was so comical to hear this man up front, you know. Talk, well, it's so funny. It was really, really funny. Kenny Ball Jr. sharing his memories of Ackerbilk, who's died at the age of 85.